Hi, welcome to First Year Microeconomics. We're going to continue our discussion of comparative advantage. If you haven't seen the earlier presentation, an introduction to comparative advantage, then I suggest you look at that first. In this presentation, we're going to continue our discussion by focusing on the marginal opportunity cost and showing the importance of marginal opportunity cost for gains from trade. We're also going to show how Tom and Becky may coordinate trade so that they don't need a dictator to do it for them. First, a reminder, comparative advantage refers to the situation where individuals have different opportunity costs for different activities. When individuals have different opportunity costs, then specialisation according to the lower opportunity cost in production and then trade can make them both better off. Remember that opportunity cost of an activity is the best alternative for gone when you carry out that activity. So continuing our earlier example, Tom had an opportunity cost of producing potatoes of half a kilogram of tomatoes for gone. Or in other words, whenever he produced a kilogram of potatoes, he had to use time, and in that time he could have produced half a kilogram of tomatoes. And similarly for the example through this table. Remember also from last time that Tom's opportunity cost of potatoes is simply the inverse of his opportunity cost of tomatoes, and vice versa. Thirdly, Notice that, while in our example, Becky has an absolute advantage in everything, that Tom actually has a comparative advantage in tomatoes. His opportunity cost of tomato production is 2 kilograms of potatoes for gone, whereas Becky's was 3. And Becky has a comparative advantage in potato production. Her opportunity cost of 1 kilogram of potatoes is a third of a kilogram of tomatoes for gone. Let's use the same starting point as last time, so that in the absence of specialisation and trade, we're going to assume that Tom and Becky each spend half of their time producing tomatoes and half of their time producing potatoes. So they'll have 24 hours each week to produce tomatoes, and they'll each have 24 hours to produce potatoes. And we can fill in our production table. If Tom has 24 hours that he spends on potato production, it takes him 4 hours to produce 1 kilogram of potatoes, so he can produce 6 kilograms of potatoes. And similarly, for Becky, if she has 24 hours in which she produces tomatoes, then it takes Becky six hours to produce one kilogram of tomatoes, so in that time she can produce four kilograms of tomatoes, and so on throughout this table. Total production is simply given by 18 kilograms of potatoes and seven kilograms of tomatoes. Now suppose one day Tom has a really bright idea. He goes to Becky and he says, hey Becky, how about I produce one more kilogram of tomatoes? That means I'll have to produce less potatoes. But I want you, Becky, to produce one less kilogram of tomatoes and to use your spare time to produce potatoes. And Tom says to Becky, this is going to make us both better off. Now, Becky's a bit dubious about this, but she agrees to follow Tom's plan. So what happens if Tom decides to produce one more kilogram of tomatoes? and Becky produces one less kilogram of tomatoes. Here's our starting point again, when they divide their time 50-50 between potato and tomato production. If Tom produces one more kilogram of tomatoes, then he'll be producing four kilograms, rather than three kilograms of tomatoes. Of course, this has an opportunity cost. To produce an extra kilogram of tomatoes, Tom has to find an extra eight hours of work. And the only way he can do that is by spending less time on potato production. So he can no longer produce the six kilograms of potatoes. 
to produce the extra kilogram of tomatoes, Tom has to reduce his time spent on potato production by 8 hours. It takes him 4 hours to produce a kilogram of potatoes, so he has to give up 2 kilograms of potatoes. Or in other words, Tom's opportunity cost of 1 kilogram of tomatoes is 2 kilograms of potatoes. So Tom's new potato production level is only 4 kilograms. Now, what about Becky? She will be producing one less kilogram of tomatoes. So Becky's new production level is 3 kilograms of tomatoes. Now remember, Becky takes 6 hours to produce a kilogram of tomatoes. So by producing one less kilogram of tomatoes, she frees up 6 hours of her time. She can use that for potato production. And it takes Becky 2 hours to produce a kilogram of potatoes. So she's able to increase her potato production by 3 kilograms. So Becky's potato production increases from 12 to 15 kilograms. Notice that what is happening here is that we're having specialisation at the margin according to marginal opportunity cost. Tom had a marginal opportunity cost of tomatoes, 2 kilogram of potatoes. Becky's opportunity cost of tomatoes is 3 kilogram of potato. So by specialising according to lower marginal opportunity cost, we've been able to keep tomato numbers the same, but we've actually been able to raise potato production by 1 kilogram. So if we look at total production, we still have 7 kilograms of tomatoes, but we have 19 kilograms of potatoes whereas we only had 18 kilograms before specialisation. Tom and Becky can decide how they share this extra one kilogram of potatoes. Maybe 50-50, maybe Tom gets a bit more for coming up with the idea. However, they both will be better off by specialising according to marginal opportunity cost. And then trading. So if Tom produces more of a good where he has the lower marginal opportunity cost, and Becky produces more of a good where she has the lower marginal opportunity cost, Tom and Becky can organise their production so they end up with more output and they can then trade and share that output between themselves. They can both be better off. And they don't really need a dictator to tell them to do this. They will do it out of their own self-interest. It makes sense for Tom and Becky to specialise because they can both gain. They're both winners by specialisation and trade.